guys welcome back to another video today I feel the need to just play in some good old-fashioned acrylic paint so what I'm going to be doing is designing four placemats that I found at Goodwill and I'm gonna show them to you because they are freaking awesome but before I do that I want to show you yesterday's project and how it came out I'm going to make some room here. I have so much stuff all over the place. So I have four of these big placemats. So I'm really, <laughs> really out of the, the comfort zone here. Anyway, here is yesterday's piece. I'll show you some close-ups of some really cool spots. Um, I'm really, really happy with this. And everything that I got out of it. Sorry about the blind. But yeah, I'm, I'm really, uh, really, really digging that one. And here are the sides. They were taped. Um, what happens is no matter how much you tape it, because I taped this around once and then again and I really burnished it down good I had a really hard time getting the tape off I burnished it down so good you're still gonna get the staining here on the wood so what I will end up doing is just lightly sanding it until that's gone and then when it's time to sell it once it sells I'll either do a complete um, flood coat over the whole thing or I may leave the sides natural wood, depending on how much of this I can get off. Or I could paint them and then do a flood coat. I will leave it up to whoever purchases it. But it really, those colors together, I don't know if you can really see them. They really, really went good together. And I didn't think when I first started that they were, but man... You can see like it, how it almost glows certain parts of it. I am in love with it. So anyway, what I'm doing today is these placemats, which are actually MDF with cork on the back of them. Now I found two complete sets. I was in heaven. They were $2.99 for four of them. And they had a total of eight. But the thing was, is they were on sale 50% off. So I got eight of these for $3. So they're these old school, ugly placemats. But look at the back. that It's like brand new almost. The sticker is clean. Like just everything. It's They're perfect. So what I've done so far is I just put a light coat of some black acrylic paint on them just to have a little tooth for the acrylic pour to stick to because they are shiny and I was worried that it may slide off. Um, I taped the backs off completely and I've mixed up my paints already. So I'm going to tell you which paints I have and then we're going to jump right in. So I have black which is artist the artist loft I believe artist loft flow acrylic i'll show you the bottle and the white is also the same brand so here is the bottle of I got my hands full here artist loft flow acrylic okay i have the white and the black are both that brand then i mixed up some acrylic ink by Amsterdam, the turquoise blue. I have two metallics that I'm using Midnight Blue by Craft Smart. And the other metallic I'm using is this copper, but I mixed in a little bit of orange to make a nice rust color that I'll show you in a minute. Then I have Calypso Sky by Folk Art. 
And then this was the orange I mixed in with the metallic. I'm sorry, it was cadmium red light hue. I have bright aqua green, Liquitex obviously, cobalt blue hue, and cerulean blue hue. So I have them all mixed up. I mixed my paints 75% Floetrol to 25% paint. So now, I do not do exact measurements because I know hearing 75 to 25 can be confusing. I do not do exact measurements. What I do is if I put the paint, the flow trial up to here, I'll put a quarter worth past there. I don't measure, I don't weigh or anything like that. My paints are a little on the thicker side, but they are flowing nicely, as you can see. And I just want to show you the rust color that I made. This one, I may have to add a little bit more water. Because it's feeling a little bit thick. And then the other blues you can see in front of you. And then this is the uh, other metallic the midnight blue metallic. It's really, really dark. So I'm just going to set myself up here. Get ready. What I'm going to do is put uh, three. No, I'm going to put four drops of silicone in each color except for the black, the white, and the two metallics. So all of the rest of the blues are going to have silicone in them. What I'm using for silicone today is my favorite, the KY True Feel Premium Intimate Lubricant. It has to be, get this camera to focus. No, it's not focusing. It has to be this brand because this is 100% dimethicone. The other ones have uh, something else in them. So you want the True Feel Premium Intimate Lubricant brand. All right, so I'm going to get set up and we're going to get started. Okay, so my plan is to do one at a time and set it off to the side. I previously set these all up on cups and leveled them so I don't have to worry about it afterwards. Um, hopefully it's level. My level says it's level, but my paintings tell me a different story. I don't know the house is off or what it is, but it's the best it's going to get. So the first thing I need to do is make four flip cups for this painting. Um, I'm now rethinking that. I think what I'm going to do is do two smaller flip cups instead of the big ones so that I can release them in different spots. So I'm just going to grab some little cups and I'm going to start filling them up with my paints, alternating colors, doing whatever I feel I need to do. Um, I'm going to lay some black paint down on the placemat before I start pouring on it to help the colors move more easily. And, um, yeah, I think that's it. I'm just adding my silicone in here. Or I should say my KY. Again, into every color except for black, white. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put it in the white, not the black. So no silicone in the, the black or the rust color or the midnight blue metallic metallics when you use um silicone in them they seem to act weird so that's why i don't like to use a lot of metallics in a pour and i don't like to use a lot of silicone especially when it comes to metallics so i'm just giving this a quick couple of stirs just to Get it into the paint, not to emulsify it. 
If you want to have smaller cells in your painting, then you want to stir this in really good. But if you want big, large cells in your painting, just mix it in so it's not floating on the top and then stop. So I'm going to fill up one of these cups on camera so you can see what I do. And then I will pause, fill the rest of them up so that you don't have to watch all that. <clears throat> also, uh, an important thing to remember, the first color you put in the cup is the last color that's going to come out on top. So for me... I don't want black to be the last thing coming out. I think I'll start with a blue. So I'm going to put a little bit in each of the cups. And then you're just going to do that with every color, alternating different colors. So now I think I will put a little tiny bit of, of black. I have this big bucket of black mixed up because I do need to have some for the uh, canvas itself. I'm going to call the placemats a canvas because it's just easier that way for me. All right. So I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not going to do each, all of them with you because that will be boring for you. I'm going to put in a light blue. A little bit of the white. And then, like I said, just keep going around and around with different colors until you get the cup full. Now I'm going to come in with a little bit more of the white. And then some of that rust color. Not a lot because I don't want it to overpower and be everywhere. I want to see hints of it. So I have one more color to use here. Maybe I'll put some black in first. And then my lighter blue. Or aqua mint, light aqua. I can't remember the name of this one. And then I'm going to tap it off with some white. And that's it. So I'm going to do that to the rest of the cups. And then I will be right back. I wanted to show you guys something really quick. Um, what I find, you saw me pour these this first cup, just pouring them into each other. What I find when you want to do colors that you really don't want to blend too much because you're afraid they'll get muddy, and what muddy means is that the colors blend and they just turn like a nasty brown color. Um, what you can do and what I do is you can separate them by lightly um, sprinkling, I guess you could say, the paint into the cup. So I'm going to show you that. So I just put some orange down. So what I want to do is just lightly go over it, drizzling some black. So that that black is in between that and the next color that I'm going to use, which will be a light blue. So 
to me is this seems to help and you do a little bit of paint at a time instead of pouring it all in at once and you tend to get more of the different colors um, popping through the cells meaning you tend to get a cell that is blue but then you look at it and there's like rings of color inside of it this tends to achieve that look for me so it does take a little bit longer especially when you're doing as many as i'm doing here but to me it's well worth it and now i will just go and take some blue and do the same thing into the cups so that is a, another technique for filling your cups besides just pouring them into the cup. There's a lot of different techniques you can look up. There's uh, tree ring pours where you kind of just lay the colors on top of each other slowly. There's all different types of techniques. This one, I don't know what the name of it would be, but I'm sure it's somewhere out there. There's a technique that's not called drizzling your paint. <laughs> that's Tammy's name for the technique. Okay, so I'm going to continue doing this until my cups are filled. I just wanted to show you that really quick. Okay, guys, you ready for the shit show to start? I made one hell of a mess cleaning this up or filling up. The cups, I should say, not cleaning it up. But that's half of the fun. You take that stick and you just fling it in the cups and let it do what it wants and have fun with it. So I need to probably do a flip cup on one of these and then just a quick Because they are very, very full. Um... Just see if I can flip this or not without it going everywhere. Hey, I got it. I got it. All right, man. And here's number two coming in. Now, this is the cup that I didn't fill drizzling. So let's keep track of this and see how it looks compared to the other ones when they're finished to see if we can see a difference in it. So, sweet baby Jesus. Stay. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is pour some of this black on just around it. A lot of paint and you do this just to help the paint move along whatever surface you're pouring on that'll be good for now how pretty that is already wow I'm just going to come over this way a little bit because I don't want it to all fly off of my board when I lift it. What is that already in there? I knew I had something in my paint. I saw it flip in there before. Oh, I know what that is. All right. You know what that is? The paint I just put on top. Uh-oh. Well, we'll see. see what happens here because if it doesn't stick to that I have to sand them now that's kind of sucks Alright, 
goes number two. Tilt slowly. Now the only thing that may save me with these is, I forgot to mention also, I added a little glue into my mix. And when I say little, I mean little, little like a teaspoon worth that may help this adhere to that surface but we're just gonna have to wait and see what happens and you know something I'm not going to waste my paint on doing all four of them if it doesn't work so I'm gonna stop right after this one and I don't want to lose that pot spot I may have to seal them in with a coat of resin. All right, here's what I want to do here with these now. I want to add some black so that I don't have to move it so much in certain areas. I swear, when you do acrylic pours, I don't know if you ever notice, the nicest part of them you always lose because you have to tilt it. Like, why can't those beautiful cells be right in the center? Okay, and then I'm just going to add a little bit down here to help it. And then also right in here. Okay. Let's see if that does the trick. They're very pretty. Very pretty. So I'm going to torch it a little bit and then what I'm going to do is take you guys in for a close up and I'm going to end this video right here until this dries and I see what happens.
because, uh, like I said, I don't want to waste the paint if it's not going to work. And I have to rough up that surface even more. I thought just adding the acrylic would be enough, but it's not. It's not. I'm just getting the edges here to make sure they're covered nicely. I have a little piece here that is bare. Just gonna grab a little bit of this run off here. Nope. I'm not going to do that. I lied. All right. I'm just grabbing a little bit of run off with a stick. Now, what I'm going to do is torch quick and then bring it in. Like I said, the only thing that may be able to save me is the glue that's in there. But I'm thinking I may have to, to sand these down first for them to work. very pretty the colors together I love them here let me take you in all right here we go figure out a way so the, the light doesn't interfere I really really like those colors together so I am going to go to the drawing board and revamp my plan. Look at that area right there with that turquoise interlacing with the uh, rust color. Oh, I love that. Absolutely love it. Over here, the metallic took over a little bit. That's why you got to be careful with metallics. They will take over like that. But either way, look at, look at that area. That is just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. All right, guys. So I'm going to let it sit. As you can see, I have the other ones set up the same way. If it doesn't work, those are going on a canvas next, and you'll be seeing that because I'm not going to waste the paint. And that would make a pretty awesome canvas. Maybe, you know, something, I'm going to come back with another video later today and just do a canvas with them because I'm going to just sand these down and not take a chance. Alrighty, so I hope you guys are all having a great day, and I'll see you later tonight. Happy pouring!